Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code 536, construct a binary tree from string. You need to construct a binary tree from a string consisting of parentheses and integers. A whole input represents a binary tree. It consists of an integer followed by 0, 1, or 2 pairs of parentheses. The integer represents the roots value and a pair of parentheses contains a child binary tree with the same structure. You always start to construct the left child node of the parent first if it exists. Now that we read the prompt, let's look at a quick example here. So we're given this binary tree. So this is kind of the visual representation, but this is how it's actually represented. So we can see four, two, three, one, um, six, five. So let's see how they actually got this. So the first one, the root, oops, uh, is that visible? Maybe I'll change the pen color. Okay, so the first note is this four. So this is actually the, the root of the tree. So we have this four. Then remember that a child of a given node is represented when we have parentheses. So we have this set of parentheses here, which is actually going to represent the left subtree of four. So these nodes two, three, and one are going to represent um, those children. So we have two. So this is the left subtree. Then we see a, another parentheses, which means that we are now working in the left subtree of two. We have our three here. We close the parentheses uh, for the left subtree. So that means that we don't need to go any further. Then the next set of parentheses is now the right subtree of two, which is just the value one. Uh, and we've now finished that. So this is now the left side of our tree. And again, we have a new set of parentheses. So we did the left set first, which represented the left subtree of four. Now it's time to do the right subtree. So we have this parentheses set and we have the six. And then we have uh, the five, which is the left side of uh, that value there. So in theory, pretty simple. If you're just looking at it, you can visually put it together, but doing it in the code uh, is a little bit more complicated. So the algorithm that we're going to use here is we're going to have an iterative approach with a stack where we actually build out the tree as we go ahead. So what we're going to do is we're going to parse our string from left to right. Now remember that when we see an integer, that represents a node. And if we see a parenthesis, then that represents that um, we actually need to build a subtree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a stack here. And obviously initially the stack is gonna be empty. The first element we see is going to be the root. So let's put in the value of the root into our stack. <coughs> now the next element we see is going to be a parenthesis, which means that we now need to do uh, the left subtree of whatever the, the previous element that we saw. So we're basically going to do the left subtree of our four. So now the next element we see is a two, and we want to put that into our stack. And we see a new element, so we put it into our stack. Now we see another parenthesis, which means that we are working in the left subtree of the node that we just saw, so this two. And the next value we see is a three. So we're gonna go four, two, three in our stack. Now what we see is we actually see a right parenthesis. So when you see a right parenthesis, this means that you are closing one set. So as you can see, this right parenthesis closes the one that we opened when we were working with three. So now what we know is that three no longer has any children. So that means that we're actually done. We don't need to go further down into the children of three because it actually doesn't have any children. So when we see a right parenthesis, we know that we're done. And we, next, we can actually just assign the value that we last saw, the last element in our stack. We can pop it from the stack and we can assign it as a child of the parent node that we saw. So whatever is the next element in the stack. Now two, its left pointer is currently uh, none, right? Because we haven't assigned any children to it yet. And its right pointer is also none because we haven't assigned any children to it yet. So since there's no children on the left side, and if you remember from the question prompt, you should always construct the left child node of the parent first if it exists. So we want to set the left child of this node two here to actually be three. So now our stack is going to be four and two, right? Now what we do is we see another set of parentheses and a one. So we're gonna add one to our stack and this represents this node one. Now we see another set of closing parentheses, which means that one is now finished. There's nothing left in the child of one. So remember when we see a right parenthesis, we can pop that element from the stack, the last element in the stack, 
and then assign its value to um, the children of whatever the element before it in the stack is. We've already assigned the right tree um, of our node here uh, to, uh, so that means that this is the right child. So now the right child is one, and we can continue. So now we see another closing parentheses, which means that we can now pop two and assign it to four. So our stack is just going to be four, and the left child of four, since it's empty, we always assign it first, is going to be this uh, node two. So this node two uh, is going to be the left child, and remember that two has a left child of three and a right child of one. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically go through this process again for the five and the six, and uh, eventually we'll basically construct this tree. I'm not gonna go through five and six because you get the general gist, it's the same approach, just to save time, uh, there's really no need to go through it. Now there are two little things which are a bit hidden in this problem, which they don't explicitly tell you about, uh, which can trip you up. And the first one here that you don't see in this example is actually how to parse negative numbers. So we'll actually need to consider the case where there's negatives. We'll handle that in the code. I'll show you how to do it. It's quite simple. It's not really gonna change the algorithm too much, so I don't wanna get diverted, but it's really the same uh, approach. The algorithm's the same. We just need to handle it in the code. The second thing that we need to handle is here you can see that all the numbers are actually digits, but you could have something in theory like 123 for a node value, uh, which means that we can't just parse a single digit when we see it. We actually need to parse what could be an entire set of digits. Um, so we'll need to handle that in the code, which we'll do momentarily. But that's the general gist. We're going to use a stack and basically go through the string from left to right, parse the elements we need, and reconstruct uh, this binary tree. So without further ado, let's actually go to the code editor and type this part up. All right, let's now type this up. The first thing that we want to check is actually that we're given a string, right? If it's empty or it's null, we can't really construct anything, so we just need to return none. So we're going to say if not a string, then we're just going to simply return none. Now we need a stack here to actually um, perform our operations, so let's now define it. So we're going to say our stack, it's just going to be an empty list, and we need to iterate over our string from left to right, so let's do that with a while loop. So we're going to need a pointer, which is going to start at zero, and we're going to say while i is actually less than the length of s, uh, we need to do some processing here. Now, at each step, we want to get whatever the current value of i is, and we're going to basically do some logic based on uh, the value of that. Remember, it can be a digit, um, or it can be a left parenthesis, a right parenthesis, or actually it can be negative. Um, so let's now get the current character, and that's going to be whatever the string of i is. The first case we want to handle is actually the negative case. So we're going to say if the current character is actually equal to negative, then we want to basically parse everything from the next value on, because if we see a negative, then, then we know that the next character is actually going to be uh, a digit, because they're not gonna give us an incorrect um, input here. So we know that we need to parse all of the digits until basically either the end of the string or we see a parentheses. So we need to basically parse all of those digits uh, because it's not guaranteed that it would just be a single digit. Remember, we could have a value like one, two, three. If we just parse the first one, um, then we would not capture two and three and we get the wrong answer in the end. So we need to basically go until either we see, um, uh, oops, uh, either we see a left parentheses or we see a right parentheses or the string is actually done. Uh, but in most cases, it'll be a, a, one of the parentheses. So what we need to do is, well, we need to move our index one forward because we need to now um, parse the digits and we need to basically capture the value. So we're going to get uh, set the value that we're capturing to zero. And now we actually need to go forward um, to capture that value and extract it. So we're going to say while i is less than the length of s and the next the current value of s of i actually is a digit, uh, then we need to keep parsing. So we're going to say val equals val times 10 plus int of s of i. Now, just quickly, if you don't understand how this works, if we're parsing number 12, the first value we're going to get is 1. But 
we can't just you know add two to it because then we'd get three now that we've moved one over then obviously you have you know you need to multiply 10 um one by 10 uh, and then add two um to actually get 12 because you need to take into account um the the, the space where it is right and then if we had like one two three then we need to multiply basically this by 100 this would by multiply no oh, sorry yeah a hun uh, one by 100 two by the 10 and then we add the three so you need to take into um, consideration the place uh, where it is which is why we're multiplying uh, the value by 10 each time to take into account that we're seeing more columns okay so hopefully that makes sense so that is the value uh, obviously we need to increase the index every time we parse and then this will end when either we hit the end of the string or we actually um, no longer are parsing digits so obviously because we incremented our um, counter here um, we can actually get the case where we parse the last element but then we move the index up um, which we actually don't want so we actually need to move the index one down um, so that we don't uh, over parse it because at the end of our while loop we're actually going to increment the element so we want to make sure that we don't um, increment it twice here so we need to basically notch it down one because at the end of our loop we're actually going to increment it so that is this case so now that we've handled um, basically parsing out the the negative we need to append to our stack a new tree node with that value that we've just created now remember the value is negative so we need to do minus uh, this value here okay so that is the first case where we actually have uh, negative now we need to actually handle um, whether it's a just a digit so else if if the current char is a digit then what we want to do here is actually just do the same thing that we just did um, except we don't have to worry about the negative so again we're going to set value equals to zero and we're going to say while i is less than the length of s and s of i dot is digit um, again we need to do value equals value times 10 plus int of s of i so this is going to parse out the value again we need to increment our uh, index to keep going forward and in the same way because we actually may have over incremented our index we need to take it down by one so that way at the end um, we can just increment everything by by one okay so now that we have our value parsed again we just want to append to our stack the tree node uh, and this time, because it's a positive value, then we just want to just put in the value. We don't need to do negative. Otherwise, if the current character is actually equal to a uh, closing parenthesis, then remember when we see a closing parenthesis, we need to pop the last element from the stack and we need to add it as a child to whatever the top of the stack is. So we're going to say that the top of the stack is equal to stack.pop. So that will remove the last element. And now what we need to do is we need to check what is at the top of the stack. Does it have a left child? If it doesn't, then we want to assign the left child to the element that we just popped. If it already has a left child, then that means we want to set it to the right. Because if you remember from the problem, it said always populate the left pointer first uh, before you do the right one. So we're going to say if not stack minus one, oops, minus one. So whatever at the top of the stack, if that doesn't have a left child, then the stack minus one, uh, its left is actually going to equal the top element. Otherwise, the stack, so whatever's at the top of the stack, its right element will actually equal to uh, the top. Now we just increment our um, index by one and we continue through our loop until we basically finish our string. Now at the end, the last thing that we want to do is actually just return whatever is at the uh, top of our stack because we will have removed all of the children and the only thing left is actually the root uh, which we can just return so all we need to do is just return stack of minus one and this will be uh, the node we need to do so I just want to make sure I didn't make any bugs here and it looks like it's fine let's submit this and it is accepted cool so what is the time and space complexity so obviously we are parsing through our string from left to right and we're going to touch each element uh, at most once. So the time complexity here 
is simply going to be um, big O of n because yeah, we just parse each element in our given input once and that's it. Space complexity, it's again going to be big O of n. In the worst case, our tree will be completely skewed to one side, uh, the left side. So what that means is actually we're, our stack is going to end up holding all of the elements until we get to the end, in which case we're going to then start popping everything. When you have left and right child, uh, you can actually pop as you kind of go along. But in the worst case, if it's completely skewed to the left, then you would basically need to store all of those elements until you then start seeing the right parentheses uh, and then you would start um, and popping them. So basically, the this uh, space complexity is the height of the tree, uh, but this is just going to depend on the size of our input here. So it's big O of n. So time, big O of n, space, big O of n. So that is how you solve this problem. Quite an interesting one, a little bit tricky because the examples, um, they don't explicitly tell you about negatives and they don't tell you that you can actually have more than one uh, digit in a row. So you need to actually parse that. But once you have uh, those kind of edge cases in mind, then actually solving this problem isn't technically too hard. It's just kind of, can you move your pointers correctly and parse the digits? Um, we've done this before in other kind of problems like this, so it's nothing uh, too crazy. Hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, why not leave a like and a comment? It can really be anything. Smash your face on the keyboard, helps with the algorithm. Leave a subscription if you enjoyed the content. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.